Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm testing out the range of the fast planes at my disposal and we are going to test them at their full speed for as long as possible. Of course we want to do this somewhat efficiently so I'm going to be climbing to 30,000 feet without the afterburner except for the TF-104G which I uh, took off with afterburner on. Uh, otherwise as you can see we're climbing without afterburner even though this plane really struggles when it's got the external fuel tanks without afterburner to climb. And that's perhaps because this is the only plane of all of them that actually properly applies the drag of the external tanks on the plane and it uses uh, external utility to do that. And so I did that properly this time. And so it is experiencing quite a lot of drag here. But we do get it up to 30,000 feet where I then light the afterburner and try to uh, proceed to break the sound barrier. So that is what we've got there. The afterburner is going. So the planes I'm going to be testing are the Simskunk Works TF-104G, which you see here, the F-35A by India Fox Teco, the A version because that's the one that has the best fuel to empty weight ratio, uh, the F-18 that comes with the game now after the Game of the Year edition, the F-14B by DC Designs, the F-15D by DC Designs, and the F-16C by SC Designs. So you see here we are approaching the Colorado River and I broke the sound barrier at around 36,000 feet and you can see that there that is it ticking over after breaking the sound barrier and as it does so of course it uh, has a lot of transonic drag and we have to account for that and so that's why we're descending right now that's because of the transonic drag hitting right there crossing the Colorado River there's a set path between Edwards Air Force Base and Cape Canaveral though I didn't expect to actually get to Cape Canaveral uh, but I had a path laid out with various uh, waypoints and so that we had a lot of places to potentially stop over even though you know uh, going past the sound barrier over land is frowned upon uh, I needed places that we could potentially land at uh, not knowing exactly what the range is going to be and I allowed for the possibility that we were going to run out of fuel and I would have to glide in basically so as you can see we're uh, pushing it here, the fuel is really low, I do decide to descend and we ultimately got it to uh, Mach 1 point, uh, just over Mach 1.9, it was close to Mach 2, you can see I dropped the external tanks at a certain, uh, once they were used up and I don't know how legit it is to drop the external tanks when you're going past Mach 1 but uh, anyway Again, uh, I'm not gonna be talking about realism. I'm not talking. I'm not gonna be talking about realism. We're testing the planes in the game as they are. We're just gonna do our best with that and see what the numbers are based on what they can do. Now, this plane nicely did not uh, quit on me at 3% fuel left. A lot of the planes in Flight Sim do. They account for unusable fuel in the tanks. This one went all the way to the bottom. Uh, so the fuel reading is all the usable fuel and none of the not usable fuel, which is good because I really used every single drop of it. <laughs> so here we are uh, coming into Albuquerque. Uh, so KABQ and uh, you can very much see, well, I, actually I don't have the fuel flow. I have the fuel flow gauge, but not fuel quantity gauge. Uh, the fuel quantity is a little bit lower, but uh, you will see that we basically run out as I touch down or just before I touch down. I run up the engines because you're supposed to, to get the air over the wings otherwise it uh, has a higher stall speed and then it quits. <laughs> okay so yes this is really the range <laughs> really the range of the plane uh, when we use the afterburner. The afterburner was on for about 20 minutes uh, the full flight was 54 minutes and we got uh, in a straight line 558 nautical miles so that's why I managed to get out of it uh, was it the most efficient uh, flight I could have made after a little bit of practice I probably could optimize it a little bit better but we managed to do what we did and I moved on to test the F-35A which is of course completely different so there we go properly finished that flight I actually had to start the F-35A flight twice because there was something I didn't realize about it and I didn't notice on my attempt with the F-35B on the video I did there uh, and that's that the afterburner doesn't do anything except for consume more fuel. Right now the afterburner is on, we are at Mach 1.35 which is sort of slowish 
I turn the afterburner off and that reduces the fuel flow if you can take a look at it there um, basically by half and but we do not decelerate okay we're only at 35,000 feet uh, we're not choked or anything here uh, so this is my first attempt and I turn the afterburner eventually back on and do not accelerate uh, except because we were going down a little bit at that point uh, that was accounting for some acceleration but basically when I did the F-35B uh, flight, I didn't realize that the afterburner was giving me no benefit to consuming more fuel, and that's why the range of it was so low. Uh, now, seeing that the afterburner doesn't actually give me more thrust, uh, well, I decided to restart the flight accounting for that so that we could get the maximum range out of it, because obviously it's not going to do very well with the afterburner on. So I took off again, and this time no afterburner no afterburner at any point. Uh, it can get past Mach 1 without the afterburner and in fact can get to Mach 1.35. That's all I could get out of it. Uh, occasionally it drifted up to Mach 1.4 but not much. So yeah, interesting, interesting. I'm not too sure that that's how it's supposed to be but again that's how it's supposed to be is realism. I'm just saying this is how the plane is right now. I might be doing something wrong but uh, we'll set that aside for now. It shimmies a little bit as we break the sound barrier. I don't notice that. And, but otherwise, after we get through that, it's smooth. The autopilot was fairly good. I decided to use it and it kept it pretty stable. It was very good, actually, uh, compared to some of the other autopilots I've seen. But, yeah, Mach 1.35, uh, probably not as much of a challenge, for instance, when compared to handling a plane going Mach 2. But one thing you'll notice, the trim is maxed out. It's 100% up. So I really couldn't go much higher than this. We drifted up to 40,000 feet eventually. And that was because we were getting lighter. The plane was actually getting lighter. And the fuel was down to 31%. But yeah, it maxed out the trim and I couldn't climb. So I did the best I could to get to more efficient altitudes. Uh, remembering that the way this works is... As the plane goes up, it's getting less oxygen because there's less atmosphere to work with, but it's also getting less drag in the exact same proportion because there's less atmosphere pushing on it. So the two sort of cancel out. But if you're getting less oxygen, you need to uh, burn less fuel with it to maintain the same, same fuel mixture. So it's more efficient to fly at higher altitudes. Uh, you'll get the same sort of net benefit, net acceleration, uh, you'll get less thrust, but you'll also get less drag. Anyway, we ended up uh, landing at uh, Tyler Regional, and we passed Dallas. You can see we've got very bingo fuel, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we were able to land under thrust this time. We still had the engines running. A little bit skittish, but not too bad. So yeah, that uh, flight was 1 hour and 38 minutes. Uh, 1,147 nautical miles, no afterburner. So, and it was basically Mach 1.35. Next up was the stock F-18. And here I go from Edwards Air Force Base. Now the F-104 did have external tanks, the F-35A did not. And the F-18 does not have that option either. So its range is going to be limited by the fact that it does not have external tanks. But its range is actually more limited by a different factor. Uh, and that is that it is the only plane uh, that we have here that will quit. The engines will quit on you if you run the afterburner too long. And I think they sort of misread the situation. Yes, you're not supposed to keep the afterburner for as long as we do on any of these flights, obviously. But that's more of a maintenance wear and tear sort of thing than the actual engine dying. Uh, the actual engine dying, I don't know, I mean, again, I'm not going to talk about realism. Okay, let, let, let's just set that aside. All I'm going to tell you is that F-18 engines are going to die on us, and we are not going to be able to consume all the fuel. We did pass the sound barrier, and everything went nominally as far as uh, my plan. Though uh, You see a little shimmy here, that's because I accidentally activated the autopilot. I didn't want to and I couldn't turn it off. I didn't know how to. I forgot. I, I could have just looked in and uh, found the... Uh, I'm sure it's Z or something. 
But anyway, it's a shimmying there. It, it did an okay job anyway. 65,000 feet, so very efficient altitude, though I don't know how well it was adjusting the fuel consumption for that, but uh, probably okay. And we went to Mach 1.5, and then the engine quit. So that's the left engine out as we pass by Albuquerque. Mach 1.5 was the best I could do, uh, a little bit north of Mach 1.5, but that's about it. So, but 65,000 feet, if, uh, actually if I had known ahead of time that I would be able to get to 65,000 feet, I probably could have optimized a little bit better. I thought we weren't going to get to 65,000 feet, but, uh, so I would have probably optimized my climb a little bit to get there. But we drifted up there, and that would have been better overall if we had gotten there sooner. Okay, so, yes, one engine out. I had to descend, obviously, otherwise we would stall. And, yeah, eventually both engines are out. I decided to push the afterburner on the other engine because the parameters said that we would be trying to push the plane as hard as possible for as long as possible. But, yep, that's when they both quit on me. And now we are dead stick. And I was trying to make KCVS, but I didn't. I found a nice little highway to land beside. I didn't want to land on the highway. That's dangerous. Uh, I decided that there was a nice clear field here. Tried to get as slow as possible. Here the warnings. A little bit wiggly, but managed to land there at very slow speed. So we're still carrying some fuel after all. And avoiding trees and such that might cause us to end with the black screen. I was trying to get to the side by uh, side of the road uh, just to be picked up, but there was these, I think those are railroad tracks, but I'm not sure, but I decided to avoid them. I didn't want to accidentally stop on railroad tracks, that would be bad, so pulled away from there and just stopped there. So that flight was one hour, pretty much exactly, 740 nautical miles, again, no external tanks. Yep, so switch off, and that was logged. As you can see, 1 hour and 21 seconds. So next up, the F-14B by DC Designs. Beautiful plane, always like it. And it will be going faster. <laughs> the one problem with it is the HUD has an issue these days. Uh, I was trying to adjust the HUD brightness there, but even at 5%, it was sort of hard to read. Which is sort of okay because the F-14 A and B, the HUD didn't really show all this information. If you uh, see it in DCS, uh, yeah, it's not a particularly informative HUD. So, yeah, fair enough, you know. So here we are once again taking off from Edwards Air Force Base. And let's see where we get with this. This one has no trouble accelerating. It does have three external tanks. Climb magnificently as we turn. In fact, it was hard to keep it down to. I wanted to keep it to between 300 and 350 knots. I've been doing that with the other planes. And there we are, uh, breaking the sound barrier. So, so far, the F 104 got to Albuquerque. Uh, the F 35A got to Texas. The F 18 uh, got to New Mexico as well. And here we are at the Colorado River. Uh, the F-14 is only down to 85% and it's already at nearly 65,000 feet. I decided to descend a little bit to get past Mach 2. Uh, the plane hovered between Mach 1.8 and Mach 2.2 for most of the flight. And I decided to, I mean, eventually as we get lighter, we drift up. It's just the way of things. The trim at least did not get maxed out on this. Both the F-35 and the F-18 seem to have a tendency to max out their trim. Not a problem with this one. But yeah, I'm trying to find a sort of happy place for it <laughs> right now. The fuel consumption indication just sort of goes off scale high. So it's a little bit tough to see what the benefit of going higher is as far as the fuel consumption. I'm not sure what variance there is in the fuel consumption for the plane because it just maxes out the scale. But anyway, we did pass uh, Tyler Regional. That was the TYR on the map there. 
but I ended up losing the engines. The last 3% is not usable fuel in this case. So we are now gliding. And at least the F-14 does have that wingspan to work with. And I was looking at the airport right in front of us there, but I decided we would be overshooting it. So I aimed instead for KLES. Actually, uh, the two are basically the same length. It's about 4,000-ish feet. So they're not particularly big airports. And yeah, just trying to manage to glide in here. Lots of sort of gliding in this particular video, which I sort of like. I actually enjoy dead stick landings. Or practicing them. I think this is the first time in the F-14 that I've done one. But I forget. A little bit jerky there. But I was uh, keeping as much energy as possible. So that I could reach. And... Touchdown. Okay. Looks all good to me. And I managed to switch this one off after rolling to wherever I was able to roll to. Uh, given that I didn't have any engines. So one hour and 13 minutes, we covered 1,250 nautical miles in that time. And now the F-15, which is sort of the favorite in this whole business when you think about it. It's got three external tanks. I didn't see any empty weight difference between the C and D version. And so I went with the D version since I had the NASA livery and we are doing an experiment. So... It, of course, had no problem getting past the speed of sound and getting to decent height. Same basic parameters as before. Again, uh, not using the afterburner below 30,000 feet. And uh, this got to Mach 2.17. Occasionally, it drifted up to Mach 2.2, but mainly it was at Mach 2.17. The F-14 mostly did its stuff at Mach 2. Uh, so the F-15 was the fastest, as one might expect. Uh, it actually had sort of an overspeed on the HUD, if you see there. There's sort of an overspeed territory that we were in, but it didn't do anything bad to me. So here we are at about 56,000 feet. The trim is nice. The fuel is at 62%. And eventually we are passing right by Alexandria, Louisiana, uh, faster than I expected. It was a pleasantly quick trip, and we were on our way to... New Orleans there is the next waypoint and at New Orleans we have to do a left turn and I did 60,000 feet 19% left fuel remaining so I really had to think about landing at this point we are well over Mach 2 you can see the true airspeed 1200 well right there 1260 as I'm turning over New Orleans and here I cut off the afterburner and descend we could have probably gone a little bit further, but I decided that I would like to land this time with the engines running. So uh, so we were right there and I aimed to land at KVPS, which is an Air Force base. And we had the luxury of even taking a look at it before making the landing. You can see 9% fuel left. It is in the red. So it's a legit thing. It was very wobbly on landing very it had a tendency to jerk up like this uh, so for this plane in particular I might need to tune things you can see yeah off to uh, at, at low speeds in particular it seemed a little bit like that so I had lots of trouble trying to get it to go where I wanted it to go but landed it anyway and taxied and everything so successful flight one hour and 30 minutes and 1623 nautical miles and last but not least, the F-16C. And this has the conformal fuel tanks as well as the external fuel tanks. So quite loaded for bear. It is fairly light compared to the previous four. Of course, the F-104 is very light, uh, lighter than this. But it has the benefit of being very light and only having the one engine. Uh, the F-35 also has one engine, but it's a heavier sort of thing. Different engine. <laughs> obviously but here we are uh, climbing fairly slowly it is it didn't feel very heavy and it was climbing much slower than the previous four though not as slow as the f-104 but ultimately we got to 30,000 feet with the afterburner and proceeded on our way 
and we actually got the silence up front and sort of the mock effect thing going on this one. So that was nice. But accelerating to its top speed took a long time. Uh, it stayed at Mach 1.4 for a while and so I decided to descend a little bit to uh, give it some more speed and then climb. Ultimately, uh, it tended to between Mach 1.9 and Mach 2.1. Mach 2.1 was a stretch. It mainly stayed at one, Mach 1 1.9. But here we're still fairly slow heading over to Sedona. And here I encountered a problem with the fly-by-wire system where it would very suddenly jerk up uh, when I made even a slight tap of the, of the stick, just to pull up slightly. And this would grow more severe as we got lighter and I'll show you that later on. Eventually I turn off the fly-by-wire system. So here we're approaching Lubbock and we're at a decent speed now. And we just passed right by Dallas and 60,000 feet, 44% of fuel remaining. While before the Colorado River it seemed to consume fuel basically as I expected, it really stretched things out once we got to a decent height, once we got to 60,000 feet-ish and we got to its maximum speed, it, uh, it really hauled quite a lot. So uh, we are ahead into Louisiana here and we still have 39% of our fuel remaining. And to be honest, I was not expecting the flight to go this long and it was pretty late at night. So I'll tell you the landing isn't exactly the way I wanted it to be, but there, you, that, that, that's the jerking I'm talking about with the fly-by-wire system on. It was just a light tap and it, it shoved my head right into the forward panel. <laughs> so I did that again there and I'll show you how to turn off the fly-by-wire system. It's, oh, I, I had to find the switch, I was looking for it there. Uh, but there, the FCLS pitch trim override and then the FCLS uh, that next to it. Uh, okay, I got that off. The fly-by-wire system disabled. There, that turns it off and you won't get that jerkiness. And so after that, I had a nice smooth flight. We uh, passed right by KVPS where the F F-15 landed. And yeah. This is how the plane did. That's all I'm saying. And we headed over through the Florida panhandle. And it was at this point looking like I was actually going to make it to Cape Canaveral and so I stretched it to that. And indeed it didn't seem to be too much of a problem. Which is interesting, I just picked the first livery for the F-16 and it was a South Carolina indicated livery. And it turns out that we could have made it to South Carolina. So here we are descending, you can see 13% of our fuel remaining. No problems at all. And I don't know if there's a way to dispose of the external tanks on the F-14, F-15, or F-16. I don't think so, but I didn't, so. Anyway, landing at the shuttle landing facility. A little bit off to the side. It's not that bad a landing, it's just a little bit of a rock off to one side. The wheelbase of the F-16 is a little bit narrow. Anyway. As I taxi off, there's our results. The F-16 went for two hours, most of the time at Mach 2, went 1,935 nautical miles. So it was the winner, the F-15 in second place, the F-14 in third place, the F-35, again with no external tanks, in fourth place, the F-18, no external tanks, fifth, and the F-104 with the external tanks, sixth, but then again, it doesn't like to carry internal fuel. So with that, as I park and turn it off, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.